Hey guys, Enigmatical Chitin here. We're hitting the trap line. Trapped boiled, all ready to go. It is 2024, January 6th. And we'll be out there catching Wolf, Wolverine, Lynx, Martin, whatever else we can bump into this year. I've had a lot of people ask me, do I like trapping in the dark? Oh yeah. I'd like to say welcome to all the new subs out there. There's a lot of people that jumped on after the after the moose hunting video. So welcome to the channel. My name's Gary. I'm the Enigmatic Witch Inn here on YouTube. I live in Vinitai, Alaska. There's about 200 full-time residents. And yeah, this is the view from behind my house. The Chandelar River is right down here. The main channel of the Chandelar River is out there. This is just a back slough. But I am blessed, and blessed to take y'all with me. So let's check it out. I've had a few requests on how a review on this Fenix 3000. So I've had it for right at about a year and I've been very impressed with it. It's done better than most headlamps I've ever owned and I've owned a lot of cheap headlamps. This one is far from anything cheap. It's great. It survived every, every hunting trip, trapping trip, in the past year, having the extended line here helps a bunch to keep that battery packed up and away from your body, away from the cold. The trap line can be a very dark place to be without a decent headlamp. So one in one year in review of this Fenix 3000, and I am always impressed with this thing. I keep the battery pack deep inside of my gear. Keeps the batteries warm, keeps it running all that much longer. And the 30 below morning we had this morning has almost no effect on this headlamp. Taking it into the mountains, it's always performed well. 3000 lumens better perform well. <laughs> so the first place that we're dropping anything is right here on the trail. We'll go ahead and get a wolf snare hung here and go around the corner and put up a Martin box. Uh, yeah, you always get something on the trail. The wolves that come this close to town will come in and out right on the trail. So you may want to make sure that your close set to town is a wolf snare. All right, there's a rudimentary wolf trail set the next time through. After the ground freezes up, we'll be make sure to reset the height of that snare. And you're on. I'm getting ready to seed my lion. I'm about to seed it with probably the best bait out here. And that is the skin from a moose head not legally able to use the entire moose head. So the skin from the moose head is what we're gonna be using to seed the line as I drive down 
I'll be placing these where I'll be putting future sets and I'll be dropping them where there's not going to be any sets. So when I say seeding my line, that's exactly what I mean. And we got to make sure to feed the birds while we're at it, right? This spot where I just chopped up a bait is going to be right next to the trail. That way the next time by, when the animals come and dig right here, they'll create a pile somewhere, usually on this side. And I can drive by that and set a wolf trap from the sled on top of that snow pile. And then carry right on past that, leaving any tracks. Tracks is un... You're inevitably going to have to walk in snow, so there's no way that you can always set from the snow machine or from the, from the sled, but if you can do it, it's worth it. Man, look at that trail. Beautiful. This is a similar length setup, but instead of putting a trap over there like I would on a normal link set, the bait's gonna be chopped up, buried against the tree over there, and a few more of these willows will go out and around, and we'll put the trap out here, kind of in this trail out here, and that's where we'll have that have that wolf trap in, and we'll actually have that wolf trap set in a set of tracks running kind of parallel with our snow machine right here. And this being one of the first sets, it's going to be torn up like crazy, but one dumping of snow will cover anything that I'm doing here. But yeah, should work out pretty good. The wolves last couple of years have been slightly avoiding the spot. I mean, they come by here, but they won't go stick their foot in the trap over there. So that's why we're putting the trap out here. Right. Show it to you when it's finished. You can see the trail running through here and that's where the wolf trap will go it's so right at the middle point of this trail so the wolf traps over there very next to the toggle baits in there and on we go the snow this year is pretty crazy this is more snow by january all year, last year. That's what we're following for right now. Thank God for four strokes. Two stroke engine would burn so much gas rolling through this. And we are too. Not nearly as much as if we rolled the old school two strokes. On to our 330 set. This is a spot that I've been setting 330s in for a while and it's a sweet spot. And you can see that <laughs> the set from last year is holding up quite well, even though it's all just spruce. It's perfect. I still have the toggle here for the 330. And we're just gonna set a regular 330 on this one. We'll save the fancy circular one for out in the open. But yeah, we'll get that set put in over there. This is one way to set a 330. My nice setter is down in my shop somewhere. I totally forgot about. 
So this is the one that I carry in my pocket. And this is just a safety one, just in case the 330 ever gets stuck on my stuck on anything of me, I have this in my pocket. So you just put it on your foot. But these 330s are the cheaper ones, so the the springs can actually get a little backwards on here. But it doesn't take too much to get it in the right position. Just like that. Make sure you start with your, your safety right here on top. It's nice to have a rope thick enough that doesn't pull through any of the eyelets on here. So I'll make sure that it's not a thin one. Get it down by your foot. Get this thing right down, right above your foot. And then you pull. Pull it just like that. Get your safety on, release. Pull it out. Put your rope directly into your pocket. So you don't end up setting it somewhere thinking I'm gonna grab it later to never grab it again. I've had some questions about the shape of my trigger. And this is about as clear as I can make it. That shape right there works perfect. The links sometimes can get in there pretty deep, but this one right here is for a Wolverine. So it's perfect. First 330 set is in. Make sure you get your bait chopped up out front, kick dirt out all over the place, baits back in there, sled loaded up, and we are back on the trail. As you can see, there's another tree down. This is our fourth tree now that we've had to clear out of the way. So it actually dropped us in a pretty nice set location. So we'll be chopping some bait here and probably hanging a wolf snare on the back side of this. So when the wolves swing by to check out this bait spot right here, uh, hopefully they'll walk right into the snare that will be hanging off the back of this tree. So chopping bait, chopping tree and hanging some wolf snares. Let's go on with it. Awesome piece of, piece of meat right here, piece of fat. We'll get this chopped down into the ground. Just kind of peel it up. Get your chunks into it. You want this to freeze into the ground. You want some of it to stay out, but you want a good majority of it to freeze down. That way they got to work for it. And the birds and squirrels can't just take it all away. Clear it up. Kick some of this junk out. And this is going to be a simple set. We're just gonna have this right here, and then wolf snares behind it. It's not something super intricate. All we're doing is chopping bait there and then setting some wolf snares behind it. So not too shabby. And then we deal with that tree. <laughs> oh man, it's beautiful out here. Pitch dark and beautiful. Can't, can't complain one bit. We dropped down to probably about 35 below when it took off. It was about 20, but the temperature is steadily dropping. But right. stay moving. Good winter gear, no problem. We got a lot of snow blow over here. We're on the edge of a lake over here and the wind drifted up into a decent pile. Even though I was going about 20 miles an hour through here, we still got stuck in this.
the snow is hard packed about a foot I'm on a foot through now we're digging out the front end of this Scandic 600 ace wide track we'll dig this out and then take off again but yeah that's what we hit right there that's that's a crap that we ran into right here Woo. With these big snow machines, all you really got to do is level it off a bit as much as you can, clear any snow that's bumped up against it, and take off again. Woo! Good stuff. All your way out. Good to go. Woohoo! Very nice. Got another set location in. Here's the trail. Snow machines over there. <laughs> Almost buried just on the regular trail. So we got a loop set in here. You can see I walked through. We got a snare on one side right here. We're gonna be plowing over all our tracks on the way out. There's a snare pen, an old Lynx snare pen over there that we have changed into a wolf set. So we got one wolf trap down there, bait chopped up in the center of that, and a snare hanging over on that end. As it as the winter goes, more bait will get added to this, more snares, especially when the wolves, a set like this, it causes wolves to come, but it also makes them create their own loops all through here. So as they do that, we'll be hanging more and more snares. Oh, there's another good set in. Let's get it packed up. Head down the trail. Another set location over here that will be hanging snares. We got the fork here of four different trails coming together. So that one drops on there. And another one that heads toward the mountain goes in that direction. Another 330 set right here, right in the intersection, or close to the intersection of all four trails. So we'll get this one set in. This is not a Skidoo commercial whatsoever, but man, look at that. This thing has taken the snow, taken the beating, and kept on trucking. Snow all over it. <laughs> so let's take a look. Good, we still have our toggle from last year. And part of this set looks like it was crushed by snow, but we'll lift it up, hollow it out, and set it. We'll give that circular conibear a try at this location. So with this circular one, I think we're just gonna go with a straight out like that. Well, we'll have to change it up if we notice the animals aren't liking that style. If we get any refusals, we'll change that up. we 
I'll brush this in, get bait in there. See how it works. Pretty awesome. Thank you, sir. My friend out there that sent this to me. We're putting it to the test now. There's our bait. Give it a whirl. You guys can see, this thing doesn't have corners to properly stake it down. So I had to wire the long stick to the tree and wire the cross members right here, sit it over one pole and then stake it down. So Lord willing that all holds in place. We have the safeties off. All we gotta do is brush it in and walk away. Yeah, make sure that the only way they see the bait is through the, the opening right there. If you don't, they can dig in through the sides. They can do all sorts of funny stuff. Just fill it up. Oh, there we go. There's the brand new circular large conover. Very cool. A friend of mine that sent it to me actually told me there's one size larger. So sooner or later, we'll got to look around and see if we can scoop up another. If this works, then that's just one more tool in our arsenal. It's going to be awesome. Lord willing, it'll work. And we'll go from there. There it goes. Hopefully there's some crisscross going on here. Getting late. Temperature still going down. But proper gear. Still rolling. Some more bait for seeding the line. We'll go back to bear fat at the next crossroad. Oh back to this snowy, snowy trail. another sweet set put in here and you actually see that I had to dig this out <laughs> there's a little bit of absurd amount of snow that covered this so I got this mounded up right here with a 330 in the front of it and we have a 110 Kona bear with a box that we're gonna put I think I'll we'll put it on that tree right over there but last year we had a whole lot of Martin come through here and uh, steal bait so I'll make sure that we have this set up beforehand and we need a couple more to finish up the hat. So let's put it up. Decided to move the 110 Conabare box, Martin box, over to this pole. Add a little chunk of bait at the end, and there. I still got a few toggles here that I don't feel like getting Martin on. So I'll grab a couple of these and head down the trail. Unburied another 330 set. A tree decided to lay itself across here. But I got about two feet of snow dug out of there. A 330 bait. My trail is cut off, but I walked it around, found a way through. It is nine o'clock. We have enough time to do a couple more sets, hit a couple more sweet spots, and we'll do the rest. Another day. Trapping just started, so plenty of time ahead. We passed by some Martin tracks about 200 yards back. 
Yeah, we're right here next to this cut bank down by a, a long skinny lake. <laughs> the trail has gone by here for quite a while. And this tree that came down here is gonna make a perfect, perfect Martin spot. So I wired down some moose head skin there and I picked up this bracket. I've never tried this before. So it's in there pretty good. But there's a 110 condom bear, a little bracket I bought. Yeah, so Martin goes right up that side, right down into the 110 on his way to the bait. Little by little, it's really coming together. Looks like it's gonna be a good year. Already seen Martin tracks back there. Wolverine and Wolverine and Wolverine and Wolf come after the trail is usually put in. They don't have a reason to come by. They'll smell meat from quite a bit away. So having this bait out here is gonna do the trick. Chop up some more bear fat and head down. Oh! 